this regular meeting of June 13th, 2022 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Bradley? Here. Jones? Parks? Here. Prohaska? Here. Ryan? Here. Sansi? Here. Whitman? Here. Let's we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting on May 9th, the strategic plan update session of May 23rd, and the special meeting of June 6th as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting of May 9th, the strategic plan update session of May 23rd, and the special meeting of June 6th as submitted. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Anyone wishing to address the board can do so at this time. We ask you to come up to the podium. You have three minutes and to say your connection to the district. But before we start, um, there's a few folks that are on the agenda that will come up. So first, it's Kelly Bucano. Sorry if I just said your name. No, that's right. Great. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Kelly Bucana and I am um, on the parent-teacher organization at Jefferson Middle School. I'm joined with Erin Nysis, who is also a member. We are very, a uh, very small but mighty PTO, and we would really love to see our membership grow, so if anyone has a Jefferson student, we would love to have more people. Um, we are passionate about serving our students and the teachers at Jefferson. Um, tonight, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to come and just tell you some of our successes that we had over the school year. Um, so this year we had one major fundraiser, which we do every year, which is our discount card fundraiser. Uh, we do a minor fundraiser with apparel sales, but um, the big one at the, in the fall is our discount cards. Um, we accept teacher requests at each PTO meeting, so a teacher will submit an application for something that they wish to fund. So this past school year, the teacher requests that we funded included headphones for the sixth and seventh grade classrooms, transportation for sixth grade field trip to proving grounds, physical fitness test improvement incentives, sound equipment, batteries, costumes, and supplies for the school musical, an end of the school year raffle for students, and guitar mounts for the music rooms. In addition to teacher requests, we also fund things throughout the year that just kind of help with morale and just you know fun activities that the kids get to do. So through the discount card fundraiser, several students get to go for a ride on the American Lady. So we provided the trolley tra transportation for the American Lady. Um, we also send eighth graders on a bowling adventure <laughs> and ice skating. So we helped fund that. Uh, we also do teacher meals for both fall and spring conferences, teacher and staff appreciation treats for those weeks. And then also we help with PBIS, which is Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. And we do prizes and snacks for the kids throughout the year. We help fund those so then they can turn in their incentive dollars to um, get a prize or a snack. And then also, last but not least, we have our big hoorah at the end of the year, which is the eighth grade celebration. And this year we funded a DJ, a photo booth. We had a caterer come in and do lunch. And overwhelmingly, the most wonderful thing about the whole day was the dunk tank, where the <laughs> teachers oh. participated and the students could pay some of their incentive dollars to get balls to sync the uh, teachers, which I guess was harder than it looked. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for your time. I just wanted to um, thank you all for all of your support, and hopefully we'll come again next year. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That dunk tank sounds pretty fun. Um, next is Robin Malenta, CEO of West Music.
Good evening. Thank Hi. you for allowing me to speak. Hi, Marty. Hey. Uh, this is Marty E. Wild with West Music as well. Uh, we're here to present you with the Best Communities for Music Education Award by the National Association of Music Merchants. Now, in its 23rd year, it recognizes schools and communities that support music education. And I was just looking up, I, I heard you read your, your uh, mission to develop world-class learners and citizens of character. That's what music does, right? Mm -hmm. And we're so proud to be part of this community and proud to be associated with the district that is one of the best communities for music education. So congratulations. We have a plaque uh, for you and we have uh, plaques for every principal and music educator in the Dubuque Public Schools District. So, wow. congratulations! Thank you. Celebrate because this is a this is a big honor, and and the community should be proud of the music educational programs here in your community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, if anyone else would wish. To address the board, you can come up to the podium, say your name, your connection to the district, and you have three minutes on the timer. My name is Roseanne Schroman. Um, connection to the district, taxpayer. I never know what else to say. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, one time I was a teacher in another life, <laughs> but I was in a, a private school. So let's see. I did send an email. I, I attended the committee meeting and felt, I don't know how I felt. I felt like I was in a country where I had no say-so because I couldn't talk. That was different. I, I, my email started out apologizing for not being involved for the past 20 years. But I've run, been running businesses. I still am, but I'm getting involved. Thank you for your reply because I knew at least got through. I'm here mainly tonight to focus on the sale of that 70 acres. I think it's short-sighted to sell it. Um, I did notes, so I'll just kind of sure. use them. When that soccer complex, what, how many years ago, 30 years ago? It's been a soccer complex for 30 years. 30 years. But we've had yeah, it my son that. did play there, but those years go by. A um, dollar a year. That was very nice. It worked well for them. Even if you had done $10,000 a year, they would have come up with it. That would have been 30 years, would have been $300,000. So it would have added to the school district. Um, but it was a dollar. The sale of it for a million or even two million dollars is a drop in the bucket for what is spent in Dubuque Community Schools every year. And thankfully, we have the sunset tax that did not sunset, which brings in about $10 million every year. That money can't be spent fast enough. And I'm probably speaking for a lot of people that won't get up here and speak. Um, $10 million per year is being spent in the school district to renovate schools, and I, I think renovate way past what they need. If Dubuque grows, which it probably will, because if you pay attention to the news, people are leaving big cities in droves. You can work anywhere from anywhere. And um, Dubuque's a good town. It would be a good town for people to move into. We have the Mississippi, we have a lot of things. Big cities, are losing, small cities are winning. Farmland on Middle Road, I live on Seipel, just out by the apple orchard, and um, the farmland that I can see from my driveway on Middle Road just sold for $27,000 an acre. One parcel sold for $30,000 an acre. Now what happens if Dubuque, has to, Dubuque Community Schools has to buy your time is up. up, if you can just finish up your sentence. I rest my case. <laughs> it's, yeah, not long. Finish up? Okay. $30,000 an acre is what it's sold for. So what happens down the road if the Dubuque community has to buy land to build schools, build a school? In the past, it hasn't been done very well because they're all landlocked. And I think I'll take it to Prescott 
Is that the school? You really have to finish your. Is comment. that the school that at one time didn't even have a parking lot? So, my point being, short-sighted to sell a piece of property. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I move that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. So that brings us to administrator retirement recognition on the agenda. Well, this is more of a move than a retirement. So let me get the. We have two excellent uh, building administrators who are going to continue with some family changes to, to continue their career elsewhere. Uh, one was unable to be with us tonight due to family commitments, as uh, Dr. Dan Johnson, who has been with the district since 2002, initially as a guidance counselor, uh, then became an assistant principal and then principal. So, kind of a unique. Uh, course uh, career pathway going from guidance counselor into administration and he is moving on to Ankeny one of the Ankeny high schools I don't remember which one, if it's Centennial or... Anyway, to Ankeny, where he'll do a fantastic job in Ankeny. Dan has served the district well. He's been a voice uh, of 100% focused on senior high for many, many years and has done a great job of building a team there. So Dan will be, will be greatly uh, missed by the district. And then uh, second, uh, Sheila Schmidt. Sheila has been a lot of... Come on up, Sheila. <laughs> you get to stand here, Dan. Smart enough not to come. <laughs> <laughs> so Sheila's been with the district uh, most of the time since 2006. She did go west for a year. Uh, we will forget about that piece. Uh, she has taught both special education uh, as well as general education at the elementary level. She's been an instructional coach and is currently. Uh, the principal at Marshall Elementary School. So Sheila brings that administrative leadership style that's been in the, in the trenches in, the, in special ed, in a kindergarten classroom as an instructional coach. She understands the leadership portion of good education. She's been fantastic. Uh, we were really excited when she applied to come back to us after leaving us for a year. So it was kind of a no-brainer that we would hire her for, for that position. But life happens, and her family is moving towards the Ankeny uh, district as well. So that's uh, Ankeny 2, Dubuque 0 uh, by last count. So we are, we are really uh, excited for Sheila. Sorry to see her go, but uh, know that she'll continue to do great things for kids uh, in the state of Iowa. So that's a great thing. So we have a plaque. Uh, that says, with heartfelt gratitude in honor of meritorious service, the Board of Education is pleased to recognize Sheila for the loyal and dedicated service to the students and families and staff of the Dubuque Community School District from 2006 to 2022. And then the quote is, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creating expression and knowledge. So thank you for all that you have done for our kids. And Kate, if you want to come down, we'll do a picture. <coughs> All right, podium is yours. Well, I didn't really prepare any speeches. I didn't know it was going to be this wonderful. This is gorgeous. Thank you. All I really want to say is thank you to the Dubuque Community School District and to the Dubuque School Board. Um, it has almost been uh, two-thirds of my career, almost 20 years that I've spent in the Dubuque School District, and all three of my kids have graduated from here. Um, it's been, it's a fabulous district and a fabulous place to raise kids and, and schools for them to go through. So it was not an easy decision. I've had a lot of up and down emotions around the whole thing. I am an empty nester now, so not quite retirement yet, yeah. but um, <clears throat> so we're going to just try something new for a bit and just see where that takes us. But um, many of you in this room I have history with, either from friends or kids or neighborhoods or whichever, so we were pretty embedded in the Dubuque schools, and I, anyone I see, I will surely spread the word about how fantastic we all are here, yeah. and I'm going to miss everybody, and I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of such a great system for so long. Good Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We have 
one more administrator who's retiring, um, which is uh, Stan Reingens. Um, as you all know, Stan's going to be taking over as the executive director of the AEA Keystone, and it's his last board meeting today with us. Oh. I know. He'll come back and visit, though, I bet. Um, Stan was the human resources director for the district from 2004 until 2012, and then the interim superintendent uh, for a brief period of time until he was chosen to be our superintendent starting in 2012 until today, which is 10 amazing years. So we're very grateful for Stan and have a plaque for him too. This quote says, leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders, which is certainly true of you, Stan. So thank you thank for you. all you've done. So I don't know if I'm supposed to speak now or at the end of the meeting, so maybe I'll split it up just a little sure. bit. Whatever you but want. Uh, my math, which I taught history for a reason, so my math <laughs> could be off. Uh, for the last 18 years, I believe I've been at 270 school board meetings, uh, 432 subcommittee meetings, and a handful of uh, special meetings where we talked about interesting medical subjects. Um, <laughs> but it's been my absolute pleasure for the last 18 years to have been given the opportunity to be an employee in this district and for the past decade to be the superintendent. I have had uh, great support primarily from my family. My wife Jen is here. She was at my first school board meeting and now my last. Um, <laughs> And you can't do this job without family support. It can be 24-7, 365. Not always, but sometimes. So not always, Amy. <laughs> but uh, the, so that support is, is vital, especially when topics you know, become ingrained in, in emotion. So um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to do that. Thank the team that I've had the opportunity to work with from an administrative level, from a teacher level, from a paraprofessional, bus drivers, food service, secretary. All 2,000 employees have been a fantastic support for me for these 18 years, or particularly the last 10. And I really want to thank the community for giving me the opportunity to be uh, the superintendent. Um, that's a far stretch from where I started life as an elementary student. That uh, Many of my teachers would be just great scratching their head and wondering how that <laughs> happened. Uh, but I've, I've appreciated the support. And we haven't always agreed on every issue. But we've always agreed that students had to be the first uh, point of decision. And so it's been my pleasure to do that um, for, for the community, with the community, and with the community support. So um, I will have an opportunity to talk about school board members at the end of the meeting, I believe. So uh, thank you. 18 years, 400 and, well, 702 meetings, counting subcommittees and regular meetings, uh, flew by in a heartbeat. Uh, it's amazing. This time has gone so fast. It's been my pleasure to be here, and I'm, I won't be far away. Uh, I will always be here. We're staying in the community uh, on by by purpose. I mean, that was always our uh, focus is to be able to stay in Dubuque. So I'm fortunate to be able to do that in the new role, and it's been a great place for my own kids, uh, and a great place to have been given the opportunity to be the superintendent for for this past decade. So I'll end with that and save a few comments for the end. But thank you. things to say about you at the end too. Yeah. In the uh, meantime, congratulations to administrators who were retired. Uh, we do have quite a few board salutes today, which is exciting. So Tammy, would you want to get start. us started? On May 22nd, um, I had the opportunity of ten attending the Fulton Open House, um, the kind of the farewell that they had for the community and the staff and the family. And I think it's Kathy Brimeyer, the PTO president, and um, Chris Nugent and her staff did an amazing job. There were over 300 families and community members and alumni that were coming back that remember the days when they were, um, they were older than me <laughs> coming back and um, remember when they were at school there. And um, it was a good reminiscent for everybody and it was a wonderfully organized 
um, event, a lot of positive energy, um, you know, different things going on. So I just think they did a great job of wrapping things up and sending him on the way. So well done. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Yeah, and I have a board salute. Uh, congratulations to our Hempstead and Dubuque senior track and field teams for their amazing showing at uh, this year's state tournament, or state track meet. In particular, congratulations to Hempstead students Camden Kay, Julia Gale, Kaylee Leitzen, and Brooke O'Brien on being named the 4x800 Relay 4A state champions. Dubuque Senior High School students, uh, Jaden Arnold, Easton Stackus, Jack Gilligan, and Matthew Cruz on being named the 4 by 400 Relay Boys 4A state champions. Hempstead student, uh, Allie Darter on being named the Girl Shot Put 100 meter, 200 meter, and 400 meter wheelchair state champion. And Dubuque C senior student Matthew Cruz on being named the boys 400 hurdles 4A state champion. We are proud of these entire teams for their continued dedication, perseverance, and sportsmanship. And in particular, I would like to thank the coaches uh, and all the parents for their contribution to our students' athletic success. So we had a great track season for our students. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Whitman? And I have a board salute. Um, since Jim was just talking about track meets, um, track meets at senior high school in Hempstead, they, won, they run wonderfully. And that's with the help of the coaches, the students that help, and the volunteers for parents and community members to run these track meets. It takes a lot of people to get a track meet off. So I have a board salute from Mike Hickey. This year he celebrated 50 years of volunteering at the Washington Relays. Mike brings his two sons with him, and he never misses a meet. He loves it. He's always smiling, and they're long hours. I work a lot of track meets myself and cross-country meets. It's a lot of fun, and we um, want to thank Mike for his volunteerism. And um, he works every high school track meet, elementary track meet, and the middle school. So 50 years is an amazing accomplishment, and we're so thankful for Mike and our extended district team and Mike's sons for helping us. And I know he's not going to quit at 50 years. He'll continue. That's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Bradley? Yes, well, on May 28th, we, along with the community, had the opportunity to attend the graduations, which is, as you all know, a high point uh, of the year and, and such a special time for hundreds and hundreds of graduates and their families and friends. And this year, as we were on the field at Delzell, um, a special thing was happening, and we were aware that it was a concern. So this uh, board salute, I'm, I'm privileged to say, goes to officers Mark Lorenzen and Brandon Gudenkoff. Both police officers exhibited great heroism while on duty at the district's graduation ceremonies that day, May 28th. Just minutes before the Hempstead High School ceremony began that morning, district staff were notified of a medical emergency in the bleacher area, and a call was made to 911 for assistance of emergency medical services. Officers Gudenkoff and Lorenzen immediately responded to the area, moved into action, and began performing CPR on the individual while waiting for emergency medical services to arrive. At the time of the initial response, the subject, the person, did not have a pulse. That did not stop officers Gudenkoff and Lorenzen from continuing to do what they were trained and knew to do in that situation, life-saving efforts they performed. So as the paramedics arrived, officers Gudenkoff and Lorenzen placed an AED on the subject and successfully regained a pulse and that person returned to breathing on his own. So for one family at graduation, a milestone in a day in a student's life nearly became a tragedy. But officers Gudenkoff and Lorenzen undoubtedly prevented this person, uh, someone there to support their graduate, from being the case with their quick response. So of course the board 
joins the community and those of us who were present that day and who were aware that something was happening that was a concern. And so we thank, all of us joined together, I know, in thanking these two officers for their heroic efforts that very successfully saved a life. So, delighted. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Sancy? Yep, now I have two. Uh, the first one, a board salute goes to the district transportation team for their success on the department state inspection of our district. So despite challenges with staffing, uh, this has been our, our best inspection ever, and this is a testament to the entire team out there, which includes uh, administrators, staff support, bus drivers, attendants, and the garage team. So we want to thank you for all that you continue to do uh, throughout the school year to transport our, our students safely. Uh, the second one is to the building leadership team uh, here at the forum. You know, uh, through the transition with Fulton going to a uh, new location, a variety of the leadership team here did a barbecue for them and burgers and hot dogs. Uh, and that was uh, pretty cool for you guys to do. Again, with the transition, there's different emotions going everywhere. And sometimes it's the little things that make a big difference. So thank you to all of you who did that. And I'm saddened that I got the text last minute saying, hey, do you want a burger? Um, but despite that, thank you for doing the work. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Easier to say thank you than you can taste the burgers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout that counts. Thank you. That's right. So one last board Should salute. Sure. Sure. If Cora Harvey could come up, please. Well, we're going to embarrass Cora just a little bit more than everybody else because this is a really special uh, board salute. So okay. come up here, Cora, and So I'll this board salute we'll goes to you. Hempstead High School student Cora Harvey, who achieved an outstanding accomplishment this year. Cora was notified that she received a perfect score of 36 on the ACT exam. Whoa. So this is an achievement that is attained by less than half of 1% of ACT takers annually. So we are so pleased to have Cora and her family here with us to be recognized. And we're going to get a photo with you, but want to say congratulations. Stan's going to say something to you. So normally, and this is the third time in the 10 years that I've been the superintendent that we've had a perfect ACT, so exceptionally rare. Uh, and we will be presenting you with a laptop. Unfortunately, with the things, you know, <laughs> supply chain <laughs> being what it'll be, we'll have to arrange another time because the laptop is not here. But sometime before you're off to college, we will have a laptop uh, <laughs> to, to present to you um, so for your use and as a thank you. You know, you really, we, we celebrate a lot of things and we focus on a lot of uh, opportunities for, for students and for young people, but for somebody to come through the system and get a perfect ACT, that's just fantastic. And it says a lot about you and your study habits and your work ethic and your parents, but we are very, very proud. And we would like to take a picture with the board president here, and we will be back in touch to get you that laptop. Thank you. Where do you want us? Right here. All right. There, right here, just look at her. <coughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, Congratulations. Wait, no speech? <laughs> <laughs> She's certainly welcome to if she wants to say anything, but don't. No. <laughs> no. Her score says enough for That's you. That's right. right. Yeah. 36 speaks for itself. That's right. Any more board salutes out there? Much to celebrate in our district. All right. That moves us to the consent agenda. I move that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Is there any item that a board member wishes, wishes to have removed? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> all right, so uh, we're to the Facilities and Support Services Committee report from Ms. Whitman. 
Okay, we had our facilities meeting last Monday, and I have some um, recommendations that we can vote on. So I move the Board of Education approve the donation from Chase Homan Boy Scout in the amount of $3,160 for a disc golf course for Ele Eleanor Roosevelt Middle School. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the donation from Chase Homan Boy Scout in the amount of $3,160 for a disc golf course for Eleanor Roosevelt Middle School. Is there any discussion? Pete came to the meeting and he gave a presentation. Yes. Very nice job of presenting. Uh, it'll be a, it'll be around the campus of Roosevelt and will not interfere with any other activities. I don't believe. Oh. And open for the community too to yep. throw right. some discs around. Right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the executed construction contract bonds and certificate of insurance with Tricon General Construction Incorporated for the senior high school renovations and addition project phase two for furnishing fixtures and equipment bid package number one in the amount of $279,000. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the execu executed construction contract bonds and certificate of insurance with Tricon General Construction Incorporated for the senior high school <coughs> renovations and additions project phase two furnishings, fixtures, and equipment bid package number one in the amount of $279,279,000. Is there any discussion? I believe these are for uh, re providing furnishings for the uh, weight uh, PE performance room and also I believe the theater. Yep, getting some furniture going in there. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education authorize payment of final June 2022 bills subject to post <coughs> audit by the board. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education authorize payment of final June 2022 bills subject to post audit by the board. Is there any discussion? Kevin wants us to pay the bills. Okay. Kevin, yep. so Kevin, we'll do we have that. enough money to mm -hmm. pay the bills? We do. We're good to go. All right. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And the last um, recommendation is I move the Board of Education approve the transfer of funds from the general fund to the student activity fund for athletic, safety, and protective gear in the amount of $17,217.61 or as determined and eligible as of June 30th, 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the transfer of funds from the general fund to the student activity fund for athletic safety and protective gear in the amount of $17,217.61 or as determined and eligible as of June 30th, 2022. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. All right. And that is it. Thank you, Ms. Whitman. That takes us to Educational Programs and Policy Committee report with Ms. Bradley. As always, our uh, time together was divided between educational programs. We learned of five of the programs that were being considered, um, and I'll mention those in a moment. The second part of it was the policy portion of our agenda, and during that time, we regularly review a handful of policies we did for this time. I'll mention those in a moment. First, the educational programs. Uh, we were delighted to have Lisa Tabakhorst, our Executive Director of Elementary Education, ask the board for approval to do donate the flyleaf curriculum materials to the Holy Family System. They're no longer needed in our district because of a new adoption. The district has adopted the HMH program for students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade for English language arts. So I'll come back to a motion about that at the end of my report. Secondly, we heard from Lynn Glazer, early childhood facilitator, and Julie Lang, director of digital literacy, who updated the board on the purchase of the Hatch software system. It's from a company called Ignite, and it's for preschool children in our district and throughout the community. It's an opportunity to use uh, the 
information and the process involved in IGNITE for preschool diagnostic and practice tools. We talked about how much screen time would that bring to our, our little preschoolers. And we were pleased. Um, we were told that five to seven minutes per day of screen time, and it gives a tremendous amount of diagnostic information to the preschool teachers and allows them the information to really fine tune the instruction for those preschool kids. So we were pleased about that. And it's standards aligned to the learning standards and individualized. Thirdly, we heard from the high, uh, about the high school science curriculum. Amy Hawkins, our executive director, uh, chief operating officer of human resources and soon to be superintendent, uh, updated the committee on behalf of Mark Burns and the other folks who worked with Mark on the secondary science curriculum purchase. It's a contract that's being um, uh, allowed for the McGraw-Hill company, our own McGraw-Hill from Dubuque, for high school online um, science equipment and, and online opportunities. So it connects with our Canvas uh, program that is a, an online system that's very useful to our teachers. Thirdly, we heard also from Amy about the high school English language arts curriculum. The board had already approved the English 1-2 and English 3-4 curriculum and Amy brought to us again on behalf of Mark and the folks who worked with him the Savas program for grade 11 technically then for English 5-6 so that builds upon the curriculum that was already in place so we were pleased about that. Then Mimi Holsinger, Director of Behavior and Learning Supports and Danielle Doughty, Middle School Teacher Leadership Grant Contact Leader brought us an update on middle school social emotional curriculum materials and a, rec a request for purchase of a program called Seven Mindsets. They shared with us a bit about the program, which the board was very pleased about. It uh, has been piloted at Jefferson for a while with very positive reports from the teachers at Jefferson. It will be, it's 27 lessons that will be taught by um, all teachers, really, in all three middle schools for the purpose of really helping students gain social and emotional um, behavior skills to use in school and in life. And every teacher will, uh, once a week throughout the school year, the 27 lessons, will be taught. So the entire building, uh, the whole school, in all three middle schools, will have these 27 lessons that focus on social emotional skill building for our students. So we're pleased to see that as an addition to the social emotional learning program that's already in place. Then lastly, we considered four policies, abuse of students by school district employees, employee suspensions, acceleration, and publication of the budget. So, Good discussions and lots for us to tend to. Uh, the board is pleased to bring that, that report forward and I'll make the motion now for the donation of Flyleaf to Holy Family. I move that the Board of Education approve the donation of Flyleaf curriculum materials to the Holy Family District. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the donation of Flyleaf curriculum materials to the Holy Family District. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you for your report. You bet. And if anyone wants to attend the next <coughs> Educational Programs Policy Committee, it will be July 12th, 4.30 in the boardroom. Love to have you. All right. Thank you so much. That brings us to new business. I move the Board of Education approve a proclamation recognizing Juneteenth, Juneteenth and authorize the President and Secretary to sign on behalf of the Board. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the proclamation recognizing Juneteenth and authorize the President and Secretary to sign on behalf of the Board. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. So I'll read this proclamation for Juneteenth. Whereas Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, 
Jubilee Day and Liberation Day, recognizes and commemorates the end of slavery in the United States 157 years ago. And whereas Juneteenth acknowledges the end of the Civil War and the emancipation of black Americans and is now recognized as a federal holiday. And whereas the district is continually focused on the important work of breaking down barriers of racism. And whereas we seek to raise awareness of Juneteenth and other culturally important holidays and observances to foster greater understanding and to celebrate the rich ethnic diversity across our district and community. And whereas Dubuque's Multicultural Family Center will host the community's 12th annual Juneteenth celebration on Saturday, June 18th from noon to 3 p.m. at Comiskey Park, and the community is encouraged to attend. Now, therefore, I, Kate Parks, on behalf of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education, do hereby proclaim June 19th as an, obser an observance of Juneteenth, signed this 13th day of June, 2022. Should be a good celebration. Hopefully it'll be nice weather that day. So we're ready to go, Comiskey Park. Okay, so this brings us to board member or administrative issues. Jim? Board members come first, right? Sure. Then administrative the issues boss. come last. I would be happy to have the last word. Okay, great. <laughs> well, finally. Can we have the timer ready to go? <laughs> that timer. Only three. We'll give you four minutes. Okay, four I appreciate minutes. That. Do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, on behalf of present, or pre the present board, past boards of education, Stan, I want to thank you so much for all the contributions you made, not only to our district, but also to the community. You've led us, uh, given us a lot of confidence, dignity, integrity in your decision making, and we applaud you for that. You're leaving our district in good financial straits, uh, and uh, this shows your foresight. You're, you're leading us down the road to the future things that are going to take place in the school district, and uh, you've given us a good direction in that, in that respect. I appreciate also the uh, venturing through the COVID era. As you alluded to, it was a challenging time for all of us, but you came through with flying colors. Uh, we will obviously expect you back sometime to check us out here. This may be the last time you're sitting in this chair, however. Um, and I just want to say that, again, thank you so much for all you've done. And your legacy that, that I think you will leave with the school district is that, and this is really what you've kind of uh, follow throughout your term is that you do you did what was right for kids and that's the very most important thing that's what all of us on the board are here for basically and you did a great job in doing that so i want to thank you very much dan thank you jim i appreciate that all right i have two exciting <laughs> stories to share just to embarrass you all right so when i first got elected and you think you're going to go and do all these exciting things to move the district forward then you meet with Stan and he gives you a reality check. Like, hey, <laughs> slow down, buddy. Here's what we're gonna do for kids, right? And so right away, you made it very clear that it is what's best for kids and our staff, and I never uh, forgot that. And you inviting me right away to visit every single school building for me to see the great work, and traveling with me too, and kind of the, the funny saying at that time when I was managing the trash, you better be careful because Anderson's going to go in your trash, right? <laughs> He's going to want to know if you're recycling, composting. Um, and that was kind of the vibe. And it, it was just great going in there with you, Stan. Uh, and also uh, another great story. For many of you know, I'm a big Gators fan. I love the Gators, uh, die hard. And a few years ago, uh, we were pretty high, uh, lost Alabama by three, and I'm thinking, okay, things are going to turn around. We're going to get right back into it and start kicking butt. Then we played LSU, and if you remember that story, we ended up losing because we had someone who couldn't keep their acts together, and they ripped someone's shoe off and <laughs> threw it. And I started screaming at my TV, and Stan and I, we live pretty far away from each other, and I get a text message that says, hey, Anderson. Are you okay? <laughs> I hear you must be screaming right now. And I'm like, how in the hell can he hear me right now? 
but again, it just shows me so much about Stan. He's very personable, genuine. He knows how to kick you when you're down, right? <laughs> and then find a way to, to lift you back up. And, you know, I, I just pray, you know, this next journey for you and your family that it's nothing but prosperity, you know, because you guys done so much for the district, and now it's time for you to continue to do good work but also enjoy your amazing family. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Anderson. Um, I'll go next. Um, I've been on the school board for six years, and it's intimidating when you first get on. You're thinking, just like Anderson said, oh, I'm going to do all these things, and then you have a reality check that um, there's seven board members. But Stan has always, you, you observed how um, he works well with every board member. We're all different, and he can communicate well with us. Uh, there's never a time that you can't contact him, talk about anything you feel comfortable. And then you observe him with his staff here at the forum and the principals, how he builds relationships with everyone. And so it's not always, it's always for the kids first, but it's amazing how you have all the, the school board, the administration, all the people in the buildings working together so smoothly and in harmony that, you know, I looked forward to coming to meetings. People look forward to coming to work because it's a well-run business. You do well, and thank you for all your time. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. I've had the privilege of working alongside you, Stan, in the work for 18 years. <laughs> um, I, I started thinking, what are the things that I think are your legacy? And I think one of them is that you leave us all with a strong, vital educational s system that's really focused on kids squarely. How we do work, how things progress, it's always about the kids. And you hear that throughout other, everybody's comments. You also leave a powerful and talented staff. Mm -hmm. That doesn't come easily as HR director and now as superintendent. You've been really focused on that. And the quality of our staff shows the work you've given to that. That's huge. I think the strategic plan process and the strategic plan product that you have taken from a small thing to a very substantial guiding document that's a living, breathing document. We know districts who have strategic plans that sit on a dusty shelf. Ours is not that because of what you've done with it. You've brought life and constant life to it. You've expected when I was a staff member, I was expected by you, and as a board member, I share with you the intent to do what we say we're going to do. And that's been clearly a product of your work. I also think your community connections have been superlative. You interface with this community between the community and the public school system of this community in a way that I think is extraordinary. It's going to be hard to lose your credibility you've earned within the community and the kind of reputation people know they can trust you and that your, your door is open to them. And your connections have fitted this district well for its going forward. That's a huge thing, I think. Um, I also, your work with and for kids is so evident in so many ways. And that feeling of genuine concern for children and for them, children as students, their families, the community in which they reside, that's a strong and certain thing that pervades every aspect of, of the life of this district. The other thing that you've brought to the district that's just how we do business is collaboration. Yes, we can all look at life and say, gosh, I wish I had had a voice in that, or I wish that I could have had more of a part in that. But this district is a collaborative district. I've worked with lots of districts across the state and across the country. There is none more collaborative than this one. Does everyone's voice have what it would wish to have? Probably not. But to take 10,000 or 11,000 students and 2,000 staff members in a community of 60,000 and have the kinds of connections and the kind of collaborative processes and working relationships is really extraordinary. We owe you a debt of thanks for that. And lastly, 
you have brought to the role of superintendent a humble presence. How many times could you have sung your own praises? Instead, you noted the team, always the team. Well, this time, it's about saying to you, thanks for the leadership. The team is as good as its leader. And you have brought that humble presence to what's one of Iowa's largest districts and one of Iowa's high, most highly regarded districts. Again, we owe that to you. So I have three wishes for you. One is that you have enough challenges to make excellent use of the skills, the experiences, and the personal gifts that you walk onto the job with every day, even on the days when you look tired <laughs> and the days when we know you're stressed. Always, always, you bring those skills and experiences and an attitude of today's for the kids, and, and that's how we roll. Secondly, I wish for you enough new learning in your going forward to challenge that bright mind which you speak lowly of, uh, undeservingly, <laughs> but to challenge not only your bright mind but your love of learning. I've watched you love to learn, and that's a pretty important model for everybody in the district and a, a huge legacy that you leave. And lastly, I enough, wish for you enough joy to beautifully match the joy you bring to those of us around you. It has been a privilege to walk with you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Go ahead. Go. Okay, well, I first have some words from Katie. Um, she wanted to be here, and she's very sorry that she's missing out on this night. Um, and sharing and talking about your legacy, but her, she and her family are all recovering from COVID right now, so they're all in it. But she says this, I want to express my gratitude to Stan for being so welcoming to the board and administrative team, and also for teaching me so much about each individual school within the Dubuque Community School District. You've been a fantastic role model and inspiration for what a true champion of our schools look, looks like. Thank you again, and good luck on your new endeavor. So she wishes she was here and hopefully we'll catch up with you before. Yeah. Um, for me, um, I've been on the board for two and a half years or so, and pretty much no part of it was what I was expecting it to be. I even <laughs> met with some of you to talk about what it was going to be like, including you, Stan. And yeah, it wasn't like it was, you just got to be on it to kind of know. But especially this past year, I think it's been quite different uh, and challenging. But, you know, of all the things I didn't expect, I did not expect to also gain a friend and someone who I see as a model of leadership and a mentor to me, um, and just a fun person to be around. I think you know it comes through when you're here in the forum and and with the staff. Like this is just the place you want to be. It's everyone's happy, and there's sometimes donuts, and you can have one. But um, <laughs> one of my stories about um, getting to work with Stan has to do with my kids. So there's days when we cancel school because of weather, and as a working mom, sometimes that's a little tricky. And so I can't remember if it was heat or snow, but probably heat. Um, but I had my kids, and I was like, you know what, Stan, I think we're going to stop by. If there's no school, we're just going to come to the forum. And so my kids came, and we went into a conference room in the back, and my son, Henry, who I think was five at the time, spied this jar of lemon drops <laughs> that I know had been there when I probably first met with you to talk about running for the school board. It would have been there a while. But seven or eight years. Seven or eight years, right. They were... The whole time I've been there. Right, that's, that's a long time, right. It was a solid mass, and I think we were, like, knowing enough about COVID where it was like, no one should even touch or look at those lemon drops, right? That's not good. But Henry was keeping his eye on those because he really wanted one. So we steered him away, and luckily, I think Amy or someone just took the kids on this big tour of the whole forum, and then they come back with loads and loads of candy uh, and treats and a Darth Vader coat hook. There's just a lot of things, but one of the things they left for you was a dry erase picture of you, your likeness, as if you were at a meeting. So my daughter Jane drew it, and then she wrote an air bubble or a speaking bubble and just wrote blah, blah, blah. Like that was how she envisioned um, things went. It's in that not wrong. Well, I don't know. Um, so 
they're already planning um, and thinking about when can they visit before you move, but also coming to crash AEA and getting treats and yeah. probably awesome. destroying your dry erase board yep. if you have one. Please do. Um, but, you know, I just want to say thank you um, for everything for the last few years. I think because I've had the opportunity to work with you, I've become a better board member, but also a better teacher myself, uh, a better advocate for public schools, and a better leader. And I can't uh, thank you enough for the hours of meetings and all of your advice and counsel over the last couple of years, and especially for setting up the district for so much success going forward. And um, we appreciate you and we'll miss you. Thank you, I'll miss you too. Well, I'll go last. I've already kind of said everything. Um, everybody has already said everything that I could say, but I have been so privileged to be able to be here from the beginning when we were able to first uh, go through the turmoil when I first came on the board. Talk about coming on a board when things are crazy. <laughs> you don't come on the board expecting to ask the current superintendent to no longer continue, but we were so fortunate to be able to be in a situation where Stan was there and ready. He took on the, the interim role and it was an easy fit to just slide him right into superintendent, and it has been a great 10 years. And uh, when I ran the last time, I just said, I'll do it one more time, as long as you're around the whole time. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I will. And then when he came and told me where he was going, I thought I was going to just <laughs> sabotage his, uh, <laughs> like, you can't do that to us. But I completely understand. Um, I said, as I said before, a good leader makes our job as a board easy. And um, we, our job was very hard when I first came on the board because we did not have a good leader. And when Stan was um, put into that place, our job has been easy. And this board does not know the difference of what difficult could be. Nancy only knows it from the side she was on with it. But seriously. Uh, it, it, it makes a huge difference in any organization if your leader is strong and communicative and um, has the skills and the style that you have, our job is easy and you've made our job easy. It has been a pleasure to be able to learn this process of what board member the district is with you at the helm. You have set this district up for great success. The community has, if I hear anything, it's always, we have a great superintendent. And so they are very, um, it's been that way for uh, the whole time, lots of positives. And um, I can't thank you enough for what you have done for this district, the leaderships that you have built up. Um, you have set Amy up for success, and I know she will be able to step right in and take it over with her style. And um, I can, all I can say is thank you and the best of luck to you at AEA. And I'm glad you're going to be around because I can still bend your ear every once in a while. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I'll be there to, to listen and say, well, what does Amy think? Um, <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday standing at that podium and um, being named the superintendent. My son Jack at the time was about up to my waist, and I have a picture of that. And today he's 6'4". And, <laughs> My daughter was about to start kindergarten, and next month she moves to Salt Lake City to be a nurse after graduating from, from the University of Iowa, and, and my son Colton is a junior there. So the, this community, the, the district, um, has been everything to, to my family. And so first of all, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Uh, I joke about you know, the trajectory of my life, but truly, uh, growing up with two parents who were both public educators, I uh, have a brother who's a superintendent and many teachers in my family. Education kind of is the family business, but yeah. didn't look like it would be for Stan. Because <laughs> <laughs> things didn't start so smooth. But I have always um, uh, uh, tried to remember life as a, uh, with somebody whose parents were both teachers and what, and what conversations did they have and what, you know, how did that... Uh, you know, how did that transform the, the way you had thoughts? I remember at the podium pledging to do a couple of things, and I hope I've lived up to that. One is to restore credibility to the superintendency and to the district. Mm -hmm. One was to be um, 
transparent with the community, the good, the bad, the ugly. They would know what it was. They'd have a voice and a say, and that hasn't always been easy, but I think we've, we've lived up to that. And one is to not forget that this superintendent isn't as much, as much as it's a leadership position, it's a servant position. You can't be a superintendent without serving the needs of others. That's ultimately how you lead. Um, so I've had an opportunity in hopefully throughout the process to thank the staff, the administrators, the, the folks that really do show up every day and work r ridiculously hard to make sure our kids uh, have what they need, our students have what they need to be successful and to be world-class learners. But largely I've not done that with the board because it seemed a little self-serving since they're the ones who evaluated me and decided my uh, my uh, my uh, pay raises and that sort of thing. So since that is water under the bridge, I feel pretty free to say whatever's on my mind. Uh -oh. <laughs> And in, in the decade, and, and when you become a superintendent, you don't know. You, you know from, from that chair what this role is like, but you don't know until you sit here. And I have many friends and, as I said, a brother who, who's a superintendent. And the work of the superintendent of the district, of the teachers, is really truly only made possible if you have the right board in place. It, it truly is. You, you can't underestimate the importance of an impactful uh, decision-making body that can listen to each other and work closely together. I have felt supported from my very first day until my very last day. Uh, with very few exceptions, we have had tremendous board members mm -hmm. sit in these seats. Uh, I think there were 14 or 15 during my time here. Yeah. And, and they didn't all see the world the same way, except for, for one thing. They saw that they were here because they love kids. And they worked hard to bring their version of what was best for kids, collaborated, uh, supported, listened um, to each other and to me and to that. I, I say thank you because there are many folks who sit in this chair around the country whose board doesn't listen to them. And that doesn't end well for anybody, but most importantly for kids. And I have been blessed, as I said, with board members from the beginning until now. Board members who, who you've thanked me for learning from me, I have learned as much, if not 10 times from you, um, what I've been able to teach. I, I've learned that the best ideas have to win. But a board member who always said the best ideas have to win, Stan, and I thought, eh, not sure what that, it's really one of the most true statements you could make. Doesn't matter if it's what position, whether it's a community member, a staff member, a, a administrator, a board member, the best idea has to be weeded out and fertilized and, and grown because that's what's best for kids. Uh, another board member who said, you know, you have to dig your well before you're thirsty. And that is equally true. If we don't have credibility within the community as a, as a body or as an individual, then when it, the times get tough, you, you don't have the credibility to, to move, um, to, to lead, because you don't have that credibility. So to, to dig you well before you're thirsty is another thing that I've learned. And then the, on this plaque, it says leaders don't create uh, followers, they create more leaders. And, and I have always, that's something I learned from the board, um, something that we've, we've had in conversation. So to me, this job has been easy. The past 10 years has been easy. Jen, you can't tell if I'm lying. Because <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately for her, she gets the rough end of things on the you know, early mornings or late nights when it's not easy. But, but comparatively, it has because we've had great board members. The community um, has always, or I should say has never let me down. They have always elected people who were true to the mission of doing what's best for kids. And to that, I'm, I'm grateful. So I've learned something from all 15 board members that, that I've worked with, um, whether it's been for a relatively short period of time or whether it's from the, the day that I walked through the door and, and uh, was, was welcomed here as a, a, to the district. Um, board members have, have been uh, fantastic. They've been a large part of our life for, for a decade, and um, I will miss these meetings. I will miss the 
evening phone conversations. Uh, I will miss the sort of herding of cats that <laughs> takes place from time to time to, to, to keep us. Uh, but I will always remember that, that I had your support and I hope you feel you've always had my support even when we've had to do some tough things. And, and the, 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 the bravery, the, uh, the honesty, the, the altruistic motives that I've seen in board members to put yourself in these positions to sit in these chairs in difficult times is, is something that is inspiring to me. So know that for all the nice things you say about me, um, the opposite is equally true. I would not, could not have done this job without you. I know that Amy will feel the same way in a very short period of time, but this community is blessed, truly blessed to have the board members um, that it currently has and that it's had in the past. And I say that openly, like I said, with very few exceptions, that has been, been, been the truth. Um, so thank you for, for what you've given me. And I won't be far away. We are staying in the community. I do have one more to get to graduation. <laughs> um, and it is my job at the AEA to support this district. And so your phone calls or the administrator phone calls will be answered and we'll do everything we can to make sure the district keeps moving forward. So uh, I look forward to continuing that. And I look forward to Florida continuing to have bad football teams so I can give Anderson a hard time every Saturday. Ouch. Be careful. Um, wow. For as long as uh, I can do that. So anyway, know that, that I appreciate your words to me, but know that it was you who made this district what it is. It, made, it was you who made it possible for me to just stay in this position for 10 years because that in and of itself is pretty unique. Yes, it is. And I started saying 10 years, that's what I was hopeful for, and here we are, and it seems like you told me 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> he told me think, the same thing. I think in the interview, <laughs> So I think I'm my first interview, I said 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be good. But thank yeah. you for all that you've done for me, and more importantly, thank you for what you will continue to do for our students. Well, thank you. Well, you're, thank you, and you're very welcome. Yes. It's been a good ride. Yep, it's been and a good we'll ride. And we'll continue on that ride. Yep. Yep. Looking forward to it. Yep. Okay. All right. Whew. Any other board member or administrative non-agenda issues or items? Folks? No? All right, Stan, well, we're adjourned for your All last right. meeting so, as superintendent. Thank you.